others and what we saw in the presentations earlier today. Another point that uh, has been repeated by Chad is that the farmers are cash rich. Uh, agricultural commodities have given good returns to farmers. Farmers are sitting on cash. Uh, Chandrasekhar also had the same opinion that farmers are sitting on cash and now have the choice of whether they would like to deliver or not. Uh, the, uh, a very other cl uh, another clear comment that Chad made was, of course, the increase in acreage. Uh, but we'll take that on the second round of discussions. Uh, uh, his prices are very clear. It's for the old crop. It's 380 FOB, converting to 425 CNF and probably cheaper at, uh, at the way the freight rate or the freight market is today. The freight market is down in the dumps and uh, could go down further. And new crop, uh, uh, Chad, is, is, is uh, uh, putting around $400, am I right? Uh, yeah. ar around, that, around that price. Uh, the, the other element with, uh, which, which, is, uh, which is affecting these markets and which is fairly new is that China has come into the market as a buyer. And uh, I think uh, to, uh, later on towards the panel discussion, we shall discuss whether we see China as another India in terms of, uh, of, of, uh, of P imports. Uh, I will let uh, Brett uh, step in now and give us his views on, uh, on the Dun P uh, situation in, uh, in Australia. And, uh, and uh, we had a huge weather problem last year. Uh, what is left now, what the supply demand is, and what he sees uh, here on. So Dunpee's uh, friends, as you know, is mainly imported into Tuticorin and Calcutta. So I would, uh, uh, I would like some interaction from, uh, from uh, our participants and members uh, from, this, from these two areas too. Thank you. Brett, please. Thanks, Pravin. Um, just quickly, I know Rob touched on uh, peas earlier. Um, virtually Australia uh, has, has production actually dropped this last season. Uh, we went from about 460,000 tonnes last year uh, with massive exports from Australia, greater than I've seen for many a year. India took about 187,000 tonnes. Um, as Rob said, we are a, more of a price follower, uh, obviously with a small fish you know, compared to Canada. Um, this year, Pulse Australia and both Abair are saying around 303,000 tonnes. So it's about 100, and, on these figures, about 160,000 tonnes down. That's come from a couple of things. One, uh, high prices on other commodities, canola, uh, wheat, uh, et cetera, when the, when the sowing uh, time came about. Uh, secondly, we also had some adverse con weather conditions around that September, October, um, when, the, uh, when the plant was maturing. Uh, the other, other factor was Western Australia had a frost uh, why, uh, why the plant was uh, maturing, which probably cut its production by half. Um, so if you break it down uh, to understand the Australian market a little better, uh, we have a fairly strong domestic market in Victoria uh, and uh, New South Wales. And essentially all those peas grown in that area get sucked up by two major splitters uh, in a, a company called Ward McKenzie and Uni Grain. Uh, then the New South Wales product gets sucked up into the uh, stock feed market. So essentially you have left South Australia, which is uh, very consistent in its production, uh, normally, uh, but it's probably down about 80 to 100,000 tonnes on last year. Uh, Western Australia went from probably 50 odd thousand tonnes, having a couple of vessels available, to one available this year. Um, so, you know, from that point of view, um, you know, the production is down. Saying that, one thing I will make is that in Australia we've had a change of uh, shipping, shipping uh, structure uh, over the last two to three years. Uh, which is now causing major concern for uh, this, you know, the pulse industry in general. Uh, the bigger, bigger players in wheat and barley and, and canola, etc., pre-book shipping slots. Um, and you can't get a shipping slot now in Australia or out of South Australia in particular, probably out until August. Okay? So unless a company has pre-booked a shipping slot, uh, then they have the capacity to, uh, to ship. Um, so from a, uh, from a farmer point of view, the prices of uh, obviously were earlier in the year high, have come back down to uh, historical low levels again. We're below $300 track uh, and like Chad mentioned about the Canadian farmers, uh, they're very reluctant sellers below this value. So 
Uh, I think from a standpoint uh, now, uh, we're probably looking to probably be at a low base, heading towards a higher base. Uh, the other factor I would sort of keep in mind is obviously Chana prices are, are going up, as Rob pointed out from, uh, from an Australian point of view. Uh, that spread between you know, Chana and, uh, and, and Dun Peas and Yellow Peas is now blown out probably to uh, you know, over 200 US dollars a tonne, which is historically very high. So we're going to see more substitutions, especially into Chitty Karun and those markets, uh, where the container market will start to take over. Um, so from a price point of view today, replacement uh, with no margin uh, and looking at a spot shipment, not carrying it forward, you'd be talking probably around that 370, 375 fob. Uh, you add on your freight, you're probably, as Rob said, around that 420, 425 to 430 range, depending on where you're shipping. Going forward from a crop estimate next year, too early predict. Um, we, uh, we don't do our sowing until May, June. Uh, and we're obviously uh, going to be fairly heavily linked to what happens between now and then. Uh, I would suggest that uh, you know, canola prices are very high again, um, so we may see some, uh, some acreage taken away. But uh, as I said, you know, South Australia is normally very consistent, uh, so I would suggest that we'll stay probably around that 150 to 200,000 tonnes of production in that area. So. Any prices for new crop? No, there's nothing posted out there at this point in time. Well, it seems like you and Chad have been sharing your notes and come prepared because your price is identical uh, on the old crop. It's $425. Uh, that was Brett for you. Uh, another point, a very important point that uh, Brett made and we need to be very conscious about is that the spread between the yellow peas and Chennai is at its historical high. It is at 15,000 rupees, which converts to $300 a ton. So it's uh, historically high. And I think at some stage, this spread needs to break either way. So that was a very interesting point brought about by, by, uh, by Brett. And uh, I'll now ask Varinder to tell us about what is going to happen with 500,000 tons or more of, of uh, yellow peas, uh, dun peas, and peas of all kinds, which are uh, lying in every port of India in the hinterland. And over and above that, we are going straight into a new crop, which I understand is a record crop in, uh, in UP. So there is going to be uh, probably a million tons of peas available in the next, uh, uh, next uh, 60 days. So uh, Varinder, uh, can, you, can you shed some light on how the, de how the demand has been? Well, I have not come prepared. I thought I'm here to fill the chair only. <laughs> no, but you don't need, you don't need to prepare. <laughs> Well, uh, I, first of all, I would like to agree with Mr. Hakan what he said that Russian output has really surprised us all this year and this has had impact on Indian prices as well. Canadians definitely are going to produce more this year, so there will be a lot of availability from Canada as well as Russia in the coming crop. So I personally feel that this will have some impact on the price in India for the next crop. Now, coming to your question of uh, 500,000 tons stocks lying in Indian ports. Well, this surely has uh, created a lot of chaos and mayhem around. All of us have had been uh, suffering on account of this, holding on to the stocks, and really do not know the path from here. Uh, where do we go? But anyway, I mean, this is a call which has gone wrong with all of the trading fraternity, and uh, we need to take it on our stride and uh, look forward. I personally feel that, yes, uh, with the tonnages stop coming in the next three months' time, as we hear from lots of traders like Chad and uh, others, those who have had been shipping it out from there, uh, we presume that in the next two to three months' time, we will not have any boats coming from that side. So that probably help us to liquidate our cargoes which are lying here right now with us. So with pricing, yes, uh, I feel that uh, in the coming crop, we should have an impact on that given the reasonable uh, supplies available. And as Mr. Hakan has said, yes, it, uh, price discovery mechanism will not solely depend upon supply and demand. There are macro issues, currencies and all. And there are so many micro issues in India which actually hamper the market out here. I have uh, jotted down few lines uh, which uh, I thought of reading out here in a lyrical fashion, giving the plight of the Indian trading fraternity. If I'm allowed, I can read it out. Please, please. Just a minute. I'll come there with you. I need your help on that.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is just uh, my thoughts and uh, these are not to offend or antagonize anyone. This is just the plight of Indian trading fraternity, particularly in yellow peace. So I would just like to read it out for you all in a lyrical manner, but I have jotted down. Let's talk about pulses and let us give it a thought. Why there is an abundance and sometimes a drought. Experts have been analyzing and presenting theories, but no one really has any answer to the real queries. Why the prices are low when the supply is short, even during the floods and even in the drought. Traders keep guessing and holding on to the stocks, knowing a little that there shall be tumbling blocks. Government may come and intervene at its will without reasons and without having any remedial pill. They put on the stock limits to check the holders and the market further goes up crossing the borders. They direct the PSUs to import for the masses and are given the ma mandate to make big time losses. Imports are made for the markets to have stocks available. In the process, they make the polite of traders unbillable. The fraternity of the traders bears the brunt day in and day out for the sin of making profit, which is always in doubt. They have the issues with the phyto and with the port, which make them take a temporary vow not to import. On top of all this, you have the mighty brokers bunch who simply operate the market and put trade on crunch. Thank you. They have the guts and the feel to buy in future stocks without having, recourse, uh, without having resources to hold it with them in the docks. They start undercutting the prices at the first available opportunity to add salt to the injury and misery of the trading fraternity. There are some old time warriors and you have some young guns to steer the trade and corner a large quantity in tons. Ancillary services also join the party and add to the dismay. Transporter, warehouses, laborers all have a role to play. They hold the gun to the trader's head as and when they want just to milk them more and take away all the fruits of the plant. The plant which was seeded by the traders for their own self without realizing that the fruits shall go to everyone else's shelf. One leader has the labor and then all others have some grudge. Mr. President is trying to mediate but no one wants to budge. <laughs> to add to the chaos and complexities, here come the barge operators who simply find ignorance when their own boats turn traitors. I'm referring to the recent theft in Mumbai port. They steal without fear, knowing that no one has an eye on them and the so-called custodians, the CHAs, are only there to add to the mayhem. Newly formed IPGA or the erstwhile Pulses Importer Association, they are all trying from their side to make some innovative regulation. And then you have the commodity exchanges adding to the misery where speculators are the only ones who actually hold the degree. They buy and sell in the futures. I would rather like to skip this. <laughs> we need to commend this brave fraternity for their very deeds. They fall and get up again to plant some new seeds. If not black mape or green mung beans or maybe chickpeas, they still feel that they have a chance in low cost yellow peas. They shall be bubbling with energy once again and take a call, having the confidence that things are fine and they won't fall. We need to salute them for their patience and sheer consistency to stand up against all the odds and to brave the entire exigency, whether to import or not. They even go to decide by toss, which uh, everyone will agree we do that sometimes. <laughs> to stand up, <coughs> whether to import or not, they even go to decide by toss, knowing fully well that the only certainty is loss. They need to be helped by way of making level playing field wherein they get a chance to reap some reasonable profit yield in order to survive and add value to the need of the nation, which otherwise does not have enough lentils to check inflation. Importers will come and go in times, but trade will remain intact. Importers will come and go in times, but trade will remain intact. So let us all get up, contribute in our way to help it grow in fact. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, that is the poet of our industry, Varinder. Varinder. <laughs> I think he needs an applause. Put your hands together for Varinder. But on another note, uh, and a more serious one, this is in fact the plight of uh, a lot of the importers. There was an av avalanche of peas uh, which came into India, not only from Canada, but also from Russia, from Ukraine, from France. Uh, and, uh, and, and together that, uh, with that, and it, there was a double whammy when the rupee devalued by uh, between 15 to 20 percent and took the entire uh, uh, trade and industry by surprise. In India, the rupee is uh, only partially con uh, uh, convertible and hence the, the inflationary effect is lag. So there is a lag between uh, the devaluation of a currency and the inflationary effect to have its effect on the price itself. But yes, this is the plight of the Indian, uh, Indian importers this year. There has been a fairly large amount of imports, uh, but, uh, but on the brighter side, I think uh, uh, the worst is over. Uh, I firmly believe that, uh, that uh, the shipments have uh, slowed down to a trickle. The offtake has improved, and uh, we will see, soon see some life in this market uh, uh, in, in the months to, months to come. Uh, a, a, a question I would like to address to uh, Brett. Uh, I saw in a, in a presentation earlier by Rob who said that domestic consumption in Australia is increasing in chickpeas. Is it the same case in, in Dunpeas? Yeah, no, look, probably done peas are pretty well linked uh, in the des domestic market uh, to uh, other feed grains. Um, and so 